Welcome back to another episode of the Photoshop Training Hour. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to discuss the powerful blend if feature in Photoshop. Let's jump right into it. I'm going to switch over into my monitor and um, you can see this graphic. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And this is the graphic that we're going to work with. I can see Sam is saying hello from Malaysia. I love Malaysia. I've actually been to Kel, uh, Kuala Lumpur. I was there about two years ago presenting uh, Photoshop. I was teaching a Photoshop class out there and it was so amazing. Great food, great people. So shout outs to the people uh, of um, Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia. Awesome. We have Anderson from Switzerland. Thank you so much for joining. So this is the graphic that we're going to work with. So first of all, what is Blendif? Blendif is a tool that will allow you to blend pixels from one layer with the pixels of another layer. Very simple. And the controls that we're going to take a look at are going to determine how those pixels blend. So we have in this first graphic, three layers. We have this gray background layer, this linear gradient, and this angle gradient going around in a circle. On the layer on top, I'm going to double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. Now, two things. Number one, I'm going to click on the FX icon and reset to default, li uh, default list just so that you can see the same layer styles as I have, uh, just so that the layer styles that I have reflect the ones that you probably have on screen, but it really doesn't matter. We're not gonna work on, on them, but I just wanna assure you that even though the list may be different, it'll still work the same because we're going to work with the advanced blending feature. I'm sorry, with the uh, blend if feature, uh, with the blend if feature here. Another way to get to this screen is by going into the FX icon and selecting blending options. So you can use either or. Um, you can reset the list if you want. You don't have to. I just did it earlier so that you can see what I'm seeing, but it doesn't matter. We're going to work with the blend if feature here. And there's two areas that you need to look at, the this layer and the underlying layer. We're gonna look at the drop down a little later on, but we're going to start with gray. And I can see a lot of people saying, hello, we have um, Fash2314 from London, Dan from Massachusetts. I'll actually, um, next week, or not next week, tonight, I'm going to start um, a three week road trip across the East Coast of the US and I will hit up Massachusetts. I'm flying to North Carolina tonight and I'm gonna make my way all the way up to Vermont uh, following the coast and then head west towards Ohio, going all the way to Chicago, come back down uh, to St. Louis and then loop around back to North Carolina, going through Mississippi and Georgia, South Carolina. So it should be a, a really fun trip, three weeks, and I'm going to continue streaming the episodes of the Photoshop Training Hour while on the road. So hopefully I can find areas with good internet for that. So next time you see me, it will be me on the road going through all those different areas. And if you live in those areas, let me know some cool places to visit. Um, but yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, show you how the, this layer works. So the, this layer sliders control the layer that you had active when you opened up the layer style window. We had the angle gradient active when we open up this window. So when I click and drag on this black point slider, notice how the black point or the black pixels they start disappearing here. See that? See how they start disappearing? So this is what this layer is controlling. It's making the black pixels disappear with this black point slider. With the white point slider, you probably guessed it, we can make the white pixels disappear until we get to the other side. Also, you can you can see these numbers here, 0 and 255. Those are the RGB values. We have 256 levels of gray, including 0. So from 0 to 255, 0 is black, 255 is white, and that's what these numbers represent. So once we get to about 128 or so, that's halfway in between. So what this is saying is that anything that is zero, which is black here on the gradient, all the way to 50% gray here at 128 will become invisible. All these pixels are invisible. So this is why we have black going across and around to the other side and they become invisible. So this is what the, these numbers represent. Also, you, you'll notice that this is a sharp line that we're creating there. If you want to create a smooth transition between invisible and visible pixels, then you will be able to create a smooth transition. So uh, let me just say that again, because I was kind of reading a comment and I, <laughs> I couldn't read and talk at the same time. We have a sharp line 
And if we want to create a smooth transition between visible and invisible pixels, we have to use a keyboard shortcut for that. On Windows, you can hold the Alt key and click. That is um, option on the Mac. And you can now see that we can split these points apart. So now what we're doing is having the pixels that are zero all the way to 51, so black up to that shade of gray, this dark shade of gray, will be completely invisible. Then from 51 to 113, we're going to have a smooth transition to visible pixels. So after 113, which is this shade of gray, we'll make it 128 just so it's 50% gray. So basically once we get to 128, 50% gray right in the center, then we'll have 100% opacity on those pixels. So it's a great way of just creating those smooth transitions. Once again, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to split these in half. So that, uh, those two sliders control the layer that you're currently on. Now, what does the underlying layer control? The underlying layer controls the layers that are below the currently selected layer. So with the black point, you can see that I can click and drag and watch what happens. Instead of hiding, I'm actually bringing up the pixels. I'm revealing the pixels. And the reason that the circle disappears is because the background is gray. And I think it'll be more obvious um, on this side. Notice that when I click and drag the white point, see how I can start revealing the gradient below? See that? And once I get to that shade of gray that the background is, then obviously it disappears here on top. And I can do the same thing. I can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click, split it in half, and create a smooth transition between visible and invisible pixels. And again, the underlying layer, instead of hiding pixels, it brings up the pixels from the layer below, and it hides the pixels of the current layer. Now, before we go any further, let me go and make sure that we don't have any questions. So let's see. Let me scroll up. Wow, it's a lot of people here in the chat. Um, cool. Oh, we have uh, my good friend Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe here in the chat. Hey, Colin, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, if you haven't already, make sure that you ch check out Colin's YouTube channel, Photoshop Cafe. Um, he has a lot of awesome tutorials and he also does a weekly stream. Also, Colin was my first guest on the Photoshop Training Hour a couple weeks ago. You might want to go and check out that video. It was a fantastic, fantastic stream. We have Sarah from Italy, good to see you. Uh, Sarah, what part of Italy are you in? Um, I kind of speak Italian, I can understand it, but I, I can speak it okay. Um, so feel free to say something in Italian in the chat and see if I can understand it. Um, but yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. I can just see a lot of people saying thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is going to be recorded. So if you don't have time to watch it now, you can just watch it later on. Um, you can even if you watch it live, you can always watch a recording if you want to reference back to something. Cool. Um, Jesus, it will be great if you could uh, share your sample images. Thank you. Yeah, I'll make this available. I'll post it on my website uh, as well, and I'll make it available. So yeah, no problem, Jorge. Um, Mr. Mir, thank you for saying hello. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> so yeah, let's let's continue with um, BlendIf. Um, another cool thing that a lot of people don't talk about in when explaining BlendIf, and I think this is going to be something you probably haven't seen before. So if you haven't seen it, let me know in the chat. If you've seen it, also let me know. Um, I think I might have talked about this once on my YouTube channel. I don't recall. But the point is, is that you know I already showed you in the this layer I can hide the black pixels right and I can hide the white pixels or the bright pixels how would I keep only the dark and bright and hide everything in between well if you wanted to do that you can just go drag this one to the right and then drag this one to the left and swap them see that so now I can only keep the shadows and highlights or the darkest and brightest pixels and then I can just had, hide everything in the middle. See that? So now I can just keep basically the shadows and the highlights and I can hide all the midtones. And you can do that by just swapping those points across. And I can also hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to create a smooth transition. 
and you can create this this cool effect. Obviously, um, this this could have a lot of cool applications when you're blending textures, blending all kinds of things with your images. But that's something that I don't see a lot of people do. Swap those points in half so that you can hide the mid the, the you know like the midtones and just keep the highlights and shadows. So that's a cool technique that I haven't seen a lot of people use. Let me know in the chat if you knew that already or not. <clears throat> Himanshu, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Himanshu is saying that this is the first channel that he watched while learning Photoshop. So thank you so much for that. Peter says that he's never seen that swap trick before. Thanks, you're welcome. Um, that's what I try to do here, show you guys uh, trip, uh, tips and tricks that you probably haven't seen before. Um, and obviously you can do the same thing with this bottom um, slider as well if you wanted to. So you can always swap those and create really cool transitions. So this whole time I've been talking about the um, gray slider. We're going to move on to the colors a mo in a moment. But before I do that, I just want to show you like a quick actual example. Like how can you use all the information that I just gave you? Like how would that be applicable to a, a tiny little project? And what you can do is in this example, I can actually bring out the clouds and make it seem like that text is behind the clouds very, very easily. So it's only two layers. It's a sky layer and this text layer that just has layer styles that create that effect there. And I can come into this layer and again, I can double click to the side of the layer or go into the FX icon and select blending options. And from here, I can think of the situation or think of the problem that I have or, this, or think of what my solution would be, right? So I have my clouds layer on top and I want to make sure that the, uh, that the I'm sorry, I have the text layer that reads clouds on top and I have the photo of the clouds in the back and I wanna bring out the clouds so that they cover the text, right? So what color are the clouds? Or they're white, essentially. So that means that I need to work with the white on the underlying layer so I can bring those forward. So I can click and drag on this point here and see that? See how the clouds start coming out like so? Super, super cool. But the problem is that the clouds have a sharp edge. So remember earlier how I said that you can create a smooth transition between invisible and visible pixels? Well, um, let's do that now. You can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click split those in half and look at this super super cool so now it looks as if the clouds are coming in in front of that text and i can just click and drag this accordingly and it creates that cool effect so it's super super easy to do and this is this is just one example of how you can use blend if to create effects maskings uh so let me rephrase that. This is like um, a quick example of how you can mask and create cool effects um, just by using a few simple sliders. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, hello from the Philippines. Thank you so much, Marky. Uh, Suman is asking if I tried using the Affinity Photo app. I've never have. Um, to me, Photoshop does everything that I need it to do. I'm so efficient with it. So any new tool would probably slow me down. Um, there's a lot of things that Affinity Photo does well from what I've heard, but Photoshop just does so much more in the end. So um, yeah. What use of, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm get, Nayan, I think your question is about the knockout technique. If we have time, I'll talk about it. It's also on the same panel. We also have uh, Puetra from Malaysia. Good to see you. Cool. Yeah, if we have time, we'll get into knockout. So somebody remind me in the chat if we have a little time at the end um, to explain the knockout, knockout technique, which is also in that same panel. Awesome. So that's one way in which you can use blend if. So we also have this color wheel here that goes around the 360 degrees of colors. So it starts in red, goes all the way around until it gets back to red. And what we're gonna use for this color wheel is we're going to now talk about the red, green, and blue. Why red, green, and blue? Why those? Well, red, green, and blue are the RGB channels. If you open up your channels panel, you can see the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Now, this is going to be an oversimplification, but basically, 
what these channels are are a combination of light that creates all the colors that you see. You can think of these channels as masks if you want and basically anything that is dark in a given channel will not have light in the color of that channel and anything that is bright will have a lot of light in the color of that channel. So in this case I'm in the red channel. Notice how the top part is very very bright and the bottom part is dark. So then that means that the top part has a lot of red light whereas the bottom part has no red light. When I enable the RGB composite, you can see that the top part has a lot of red. So it makes sense, right? We have a lot of red light, so then therefore that part's going to be red. The opposite side has cyan. Cyan is the opposite of red. So it's going to have no red light, which is why this channel shows the bottom part as black and the top part as white. Well, what about the green channel? Well, the green channel has a lot of light in this area and no light in this area is completely dark. So then that should tell you that this side has a lot of green and this side has no green. So when there is no green, what is the opposite? What sh should show? Well, the answer is magenta. So when I enable the RGB composite, you can see that we have green here and the opposite of green is magenta and there it is. And why don't we look at, at blue now? So blue is the ne next channel, right? So we have blue here the opposite of blue is yellow, which is up here. So then that means that that channel should have a lot of bright light here and just dark up here because the opposite of blue is yellow. And when I click on blue, in fact, you can see that we have white here and black up here. So I want you to think about these relationships and also think about black and white in this context because when we go back into the RGB composite and bring up the layer style window and we select one of these channels let's start with red notice now that we have black and white black and white sliders to be clear let me just move this better so you can see it right there so black and white sliders so if i drag the black slider what do you think will happen on the this layer remember the rgb channels i'll go back to it so that you can see this is the red rgb channel right we have white and we have black here at the bottom. So when we go into the blend div and we select red, we have the black point here and the white slider here or black slider and white slider. So when I drag the white uh, when I drag the black slider, what do you think will happen to that image? Remember, black was here at the bottom because the white light is on top or the bright area is on top meaning there's a lot of red light in that area and we have black at the bottom where there is no red light. So we have black here. I can click and drag and watch what happens. See that? See how we start making those pixels disappear? The pixels that didn't have any red light. See that? And if I drag all the way to the end, we're only left with the pixels that have a lot of red light in it. And if I click and drag this point to the left, notice what happens. We get rid of all the pixels that have red light. Really, really, really cool, right? And of course, you can also do the Alt on Windows option on the Mac trick where you click on that point and it splits it in half. You can see that there. Super, super cool. And you can obviously do the same thing for the black point. And if you're wondering, you can of course also flip these guys so that you only keep the pixels that have a lot of red light and no red light, but then hide all the other ones in between. So it's super, super cool. You can use that flip technique if you want, the swapping slider technique. Let me see if we have any questions in the chat. Greetings from Florida. Good to see you. Um, thank you so much for joining. What part of Florida are you? And I used to go to um, Davie and Fort Lauderdale all the time. Love from India. Love from Bangladesh. Uh, love from Egypt. Thank you so much. Uh, wishing you a very healthy life. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thankfully, I'm very healthy at the moment. Um, we have Jose Adeleon from, from Puerto Rico. I would love to visit Puerto Rico. I've never been there, but I hear it's beautiful. Is this a good way to desaturate in color? No, this is definitely not a good way to desaturate. I'm not really desaturating pixels. I'm hiding pixels, either showing them or hiding them completely or partially. This has nothing to do with saturation. Um, please save this video. Of course, this video will be saved. 
Um, it will be on my YouTube channel. Cool. So now let's look at the other channels. Um, if we go into the green channel, what do you think will happen? Remember the channels, right? Black and white. Where was the black? Where was the white? In the green channel, the black was on this side because the opposite of green is magenta. Magenta has no green light, so that's where it's black in that channel. So let me show you. Again, just to remind you, we go into the channels panel, we go into green. See that? The black light is here. The white light is here. So when we open up blend if, and we drag this black slider, the black areas in that channel were up here because that's where we have no green light, thus we have magenta. I can drag this over and see that it disappears. Where was the white on that channel? In the green area, right? Because we're in the green channel. So I can click and drag this over to the left. See that? And again, I know I sound like a broken record, Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to split these in half and create a smooth transition. Really, really cool stuff. And again, you can do this, the swap technique. See that? I'm swapping these guys like so. Super cool stuff. And let me just bring these back to default here and go back into the blue channel. Blue is here. I think by this point, you will be able to just imagine it in your head. So if we have a lot of blue light, we're going to get blue, right? So then what color is that intensity of blue in the channel? Or what will you see? Will it be black, white, or a shade of gray? Well, in the blue channel, the areas that are completely blue will be white, right? A lot of blue light hitting that area. And areas that have no blue light will be black, and which will look yellow in the RGB composite. So yellow will be black in the blue channel. And blue will, of course, will be white in the blue channel. So when I click and drag the black slider, all the pixels that don't have a lot of blue light will disappear, like so. And if I drag the white slider, all the pixels with blue will disappear. See that? Super, super cool. And again, the swap technique can give us that result there. And of course, Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and clicking, splitting them in half creates a smooth transition like so. So when you're working with blend if and you're working with the individual channels, it's always a good idea to go into the channels panel and just look at the channels panel um, and analyze each channel individually so that you can see what's white, what's black, and how you can use that to your advantage to create a mask or to hide or reveal the pixels that you want to reveal in your image. Let me give you an example of, of how you can use that. If you wanted to take this image and do a sky replacement, well, it's actually very easy to do because if you notice, the top part here is blue, right? So then there's probably going to be a lot of blue light there and everything else in this particular image it's a different color. There's green, there's a little bit of yellow in there, brown, not blue. So if you go into the channels panel, you can just analyze these channels, red, green, but look at the blue channel. Look how bright the sky is and how dark everything else is. So then we can use this channel and blend this to create a really, really easy and quick sky replacement. So I'll go back into the RGB composite by clicking on RGB, go back into the layers panel, and go into the blending options. And very, very easy. I'm going to go into the blue channel. Remember, on the this layer, I can hide either the dark or bright pixels of any given channel. I've selected the blue channel. So if I click and drag on the white point, look at what happens. I can hide the bright pixels in that channel, in this case, the sky. I can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click to split them in half and create a smooth transition between visible and invisible pixels. That way, it just um, creates a gradual transition and I don't have sharp edges, like so. And obviously, you can spend some time fine-tuning the uh, image until you get a result that you like for your particular photo. But in this case, for this example, this works fine and I can click and drag the sky layer, the layer below, and adjust it accordingly so that it matches my image. Right about here, I would say, and 
I don't have to worry about masking too much. The branches and all those small details um, still show through. Of course, I can always come back here and fine tune it even further so that I have a better uh, transition between visible and visible pixels. But again, you can spend more time in your particular image adjusting that. And it looks fantastic. And I can click and drag it around. Now, before I move on into the next thing, let me take a quick look at the chat and see if there are any questions. Um, EDJ said, De donde eres Chuy? Soy de Mexicali, Baja California. I was born in Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico. That's where I'm from. But I grew up in Alameda, California, which is where my my father's side of the family is from. That's where my father grew up, Alameda, California. And that's where he lived most of his life. And as an adult, he uh, moved to Mexico, which is where I was born. But then when I was a child, we as a family came back to live in Alameda, California, which is where my, where my dad grew up and where I grew up. Um, yeah, so we both went to the same high school. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Thank you so much for all the love. I see a lot of people from all over the world um, just uh, sending their love. So thank you so much. Jorge said, outstanding tutorial. Thank you so much for that. We'll, um, yeah, I'm going to try to explain the knockout technique. So I'll do the knockout. Um, so, Peter, I promise that I'll do the knockout, knockout. And just in case I forget, somebody start typing knockout, like, you know, in 20 minutes if I haven't talked about it yet. Um, I wasn't planning on talking about it, but I think, Peter, you might be the second or third person who has mentioned it. So we'll definitely cover it. Um, we have Ernest from San Benito, South Texas. Awesome. Sanderson from Malawi. I don't even know where that is. Oh my God, I feel so bad. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, you can definitely use this effect for color grading your images, Jorge. Um, so I'll I'll quickly talk about that because I'm gonna talk about uh, other things about Blend If, but since since it kind of relates to what we're talking about, might as well do it now. Now, I'm just gonna warn you, this is gonna look terrible. So don't judge it by the way that it looks. This is the photo that I have, and I just want to answer that question, but... It doesn't matter what the color adjustment that you're applying is, right? So I'm just going to select edgy amber, for example. So this is my adjustment layer, and it could be multiple adjustment layers in a group. It doesn't matter. It's the same theory. And just to have better real estate to work with, I'm going to delete the layer mask. But the question from Jorge was, can you use this to color grade? You can definitely use this to color grade if you wanted to. Um, when you have a, an adjustment layer like that, you can just hide the effect from certain areas. So see that? See how I can hide the effect from the shadows and just have it in the highlights or I can hide the effects from the highlights and just have it in the shadows. So see that? So this is how you can use it to color grade if you want it to, Jorge. So this is definitely something you can do. And if you want to be fancy, well, you can use the technique that we talked about, the the flip technique, the swap technique. There you go. Like I said, it looks, it looks terrible, but you can definitely, um, you know, have a better adjustment that will fit your image I just used something that was already there um, so that I can explain to you how you could use it to color grade, but I'm sure you can like it, make it look much, much better. I hope that answered your question, Jorge. Let's see. Seth said, hi, sorry if I'm late for the class. No worries, Seth, there's always a recording. We have uh, Larry from East Africa. Nice to see you. I've only been to West Africa. I've been to uh, Togo. I've been to Lome once. So that's my only experience in Africa. Wonderful people, great food. It was fantastic. I would like to visit more places. Fantastic sky replacement. Thank you so much. Fernando said, I rarely comment on your videos, but your tutorials are very helpful. Thank you so much, Fernando. I appreciate the comment. Ceci from Bulgaria. How's it going, Ceci? Good to see you. Bellino watching from the Philippines. Hey, how's it going? When will you uh, blend that banana? <laughs> um, and just in case you guys don't know, the banana here, um, it's just uh, under the edit toolbar, it's usually three dots. And if you hold shift and click on done, that will add a banana to your toolbar. If you want to get rid of it, do the same thing, but hold alt on Windows option on the Mac and that will get rid of it when you click on done. 
We have uh, Dunny Monster watching from the UK. What part of the UK are you in, Dunny? I've been to a lot of places in the UK. I've been to London, Manchester, Liverpool, um, Bath, Brighton. Where else have I gone? Um, Lewis and a whole bunch of other places in between. Uh, Presswich. Cool. Awesome. So now what I want to focus on is one thing that's very important. We created the sky replacement by using blend if. And in a lot of Photoshop projects, you obviously will have adjustments, right? You may want to enhance the image by increasing or decreasing the brightness, hue, saturation, whatever of a photo. This is going to be an extreme effect, so obviously you probably would never do this specific thing, but it will help me explain a problem and then a solution. So I created this levels adjustment layer, and if I were to make an adjustment to this image, like you see uh, here, notice that the sky starts disappearing. Why is the sky disappearing? Well, the sky is disappearing because we reveal the sky by using a blend based on the luminosity of a channel. When we go into the channels panel, look at the blue channel now. It's uh, actually, why is that? Is that not working? Let me try again. Here we go, blue channel. Notice how it's now much grayer. It's no longer white. All the channels have changed. Right, that's because we were, we adjusted the brightness of the image, so then that changes the brightness of the blue channel, and therefore it changes the blend. Right, so how can we actually have transparency? Right now we don't have transparency. Even if I delete this adjustment layer, look at the layer thumbnail. You can still see in the layer thumbnail that we have the original sky. See the the layer thumbnail here? We have the original sky. So then th we have no transparency. We have a blend. How can we create? transparency from that blend. It's actually really, really easy to do. All you need to do is right click on the layer and convert it into a smart object. Once you do that, look at the layer thumbnail. See the layer thumbnail? We have the transparency checkboard texture on there, the, the checkerboard where the sky was. As you probably know, the checkerboard pattern that you see on in Photoshop, that pattern there, that um, implies transparency. So in the layer thumbnail, you can see the checkerboard here, so that means that there's actual transparency. When I create a levels adjustment and clip it to the layer below and do the same thing, it doesn't matter how much I adjust the image, the blend's not going to change because we have actual transparency now. And if you wanted to change the layer, maybe you realize that you made a mistake or you just want to fine tune it a little bit, you can always double click on the smart object, it opens up in a new tab, and from here, you can double click on that and you can continue making your adjustment, fine tune it, press OK, close it, save it, and it will update on the smart object and you can continue working on your composite or your working document, I should say. So remember, right click, convert to smart object so that you can work with actual transparency and not just the blend because if you're using adjustment layers or any type of adjustment to change the luminous luminosity, saturation, or what have you from your image, then that could potentially change the channel that you use to blend the image. And if you change the channel, you change the blend. I hope that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, Jesus, your tutorials are life-saving. Thank you so much, Payman. I appreciate that. Um, Ramin said, I understand. Am I a genius or are you a good teacher? You're probably a genius. That's my guess. Greetings from the Bahamas. Never been on the Bahamas, but I would love to visit sometime. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching from Bangladesh. Isn't it possible to apply modification to just the layer? Um, just, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that question, but if, if you mean what I think that you mean, um, yeah, I can make an adjustment ju to just the layer, but the problem is that if I adjust the layer, I also adjust the channel uh, or the, you know, like the overall brightness of the image, so then the blend changes. Um, so I have to convert it into a smart object to get actual transparency so that I could adjust the layer as much as I want without it changing the blend. Cool. Um, and here's another example. Um, I'm just going to clip this to the layer below. You can select the texture, control alt G on Windows, command option G on the Mac. And now uh, I have this texture on this piece of text. 
and I can double click on, on here and I can just make any adjustments that I want. See, I can hide the dark pixels and just keep the brighter pixels on top or I can hide the brighter pixels and keep the rust here at the bottom like so. Or I can do the flip thing that I showed you guys earlier and just keep a little bit of both. See that? Super, super cool, right? So very, very powerful blend if. I highly recommend that you use it. You can do so many, so many things with it. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed everything I had to say about blend if. We still have some time, so I'm gonna get into the knockout technique. I've been having that in the back of my head since a lot of you people were asking about it. So let me cancel this and just think about how I'm gonna show it to you guys because I wasn't planning on teaching it. So now I have to, I have to create a new document and just figure out how I'm gonna show you guys. Um, I, let me just find an image here. I think this image of Paris should work. Sorry about that. I wasn't planning on, on showing you this, but there was a lot of questions in the chat about it, so why not? I feel like not a lot of people talk about knockout anyway, so it might be something that most people don't know. And what I'm going to do is create um, a gradient map or something. No, not a gradient. Oh, yeah, gradient map should work. Um, I'm just thinking out loud here about how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach this. Um, so... Let me just remove that. And so Paris, right, Paris. I'm gonna put this on top here. Okay, so if I wanted to create uh, an effect where the word Paris was hiding the color effect, then I, of course I can create a selection out of my, my text here. Um, you can load a text layer or any layer as a selection by holding Control and Windows Command on the Mac and clicking on the thumbnail and it loads it as a selection. Then you can delete the layer mask and create a layer mask, right? And then you can just hide the layer and there it is. And actually, let me do the other way around like that. So maybe that's the effect that you want to go for, right? Uh, I know it might not look great, but I think it'll help showcase how the feature works. Um, the problem with doing this is that you don't have editable text, right? If you wanted to change the word Paris to France, for example, well, then you have to do the whole thing all over again, right? And it's not letting me type. Why is it not letting me type? <laughs> Let me try that one more time. There we go. Um, Paris, uh, not Paris, France. France. And, you know, I would have to center it and do the whole the whole thing all over again, right? Oh, here's the trick to centering. If you hold Control-A on Windows, Command-A on the Mac with the Move tool active, you can just center by clicking on this icon here because you create a selection around the canvas and then you just center to the canvas. Um, but anyway, notice now that I will not need to redo the whole thing, right? So select France, delete this, and create a layer mask and hide it and invert it and do all that stuff, right? So... That obviously takes a lot of work and it's not flexible because if I need to change my text, I need to change the mask and it's just very, very inconvenient, right? So the ideal situation would be that I, I could use this text layer as a mask, keep it editable, and that'd be awesome. So how can we do that? That's where knockout comes from. So if I put these two into a group, you can select layers by holding shift and clicking on, on them and then pressing Control G on Windows, Command G on the Mac to put them into a group. So now we have these inside of a group. Then I can go into the France layer and I can go into Knockout and just do Shallow and bring down the Fill Opacity and look at that. It gave me the same result. So what Knockout is doing is literally knocking a hole through the group and all the layers in that group, but nothing outside of the group. So no matter how many layers I have in this group, the text layer that's on top will punch a hole through everything down to the very last layer in that group. In this case, I only have one layer in that group. It doesn't matter. I could have a thousand. It will still push through to the very bottom layer and it creates that effect. Exactly the same thing as earlier. It's just a mask, right? So now I can come in here and I can type in Paris. If it lets me type it, Paris, see that? So it creates exactly the same effect as having a mask, 
but it's editable. Super, super cool stuff. So now you can start imagining imagining that if you use something like a variable data set, like, you know, in Photoshop, how you can create like multiple images based on variables and multiple images. I don't have a tutorial on that on my channel. I should make one. But anyway, um, you can see how, how this um, technique could help you generate um, a bunch of images off of data sets because now you're not creating layer masks, you're just using a text layer and it works as a mask. So that's what Knockout does. Now, there was another option here called Deep. What does Deep do? Well, Deep, look at that. Deep just punches a hole through everything, no matter what. It just keeps punching a hole all the way down and we get transparency, complete transparency. So no matter what I have in this, in, in this layer stack, it's gonna punch a hole through everything and create transparency. The only way that it wouldn't create transparency is if this bottom layer was a background layer. So if I go into layer, new, background from layer, then notice what happens here. The deep option punches through everything except a background layer. If you don't have a background layer, you'll get transparency. If you have a background layer, then you'll get whatever that layer is. So in this case, it creates the same effect that I had before. I usually don't use um, deep when I work. I usually use shallow because I can control shallow with a group. And again, no matter how many layers I put in that group, it, the shallow effect would only go to the very last layer in that, in, or go, cut through all the layers in that group, but not anything outside of it. So for example, if I added another layer here, and I mean, this is gonna look terrible, and I paint it over it, notice that the effect shows. See that? See how the, actually, so you can see it better. Maybe I should make it red. But see that? See how it's not, it's not gonna look red unless I go into to where the text is. See that? And if I drag that in here, that disappears because anything that is in that group will disappear if the knockout layer is on top. If it's outside of the group, it'll show. So that's what I mean. You can put as many layers as you want in there and the knockout will just knock right through it. So I hope that made some sense. Let me see if there's any comments or questions in the chat. A new different is saying, enjoying your content as per usual. Thank you so much. You're watching from St. Lucia in the Caribbean. Awesome. Avanash from India. Movie Garage is saying, amazing. Love from Pakistan. Thank you so much. Peter Lewis is saying, been working nearly full time in Photoshop for over 20 years and I learn stuff from you every time. Thanks. Thank you so much, Peter. Greetings from Brazil. Awesome, good to see you. Nicelio, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Cool. Awesome, yeah, so that's that's how knockout works. I actually knocked it out, excuse the pun, <laughs> faster than I thought I would, so we still have a few moments. Let me know if you have any questions or anything that I can answer for you. Um, how can we effectively use blend diff while working with porch as well? I mean, that's a very generic question, right? There's so many things that you can do with blend diff while working with portraits. I mean, you know, there, I mean, there's so many applications. I'm just trying to think of, of something I could show you now. Um, let me see if I have a portrait here. Um, I guess I'll just type in portrait and see what I have saved here. Okay. I'm, this might not be the best portrait, but it's what I have. There's, I mean, there's so many things you can do, right? Um, for example, you might, I mean, I know this is going to be just a very simple effect, but you know, you might be using curves to adjust the image, right? You know, you create some contrast and you realize, you know what? I don't want this curves effect to uh, affect the highlights, just the shadow as well. Bring up blend if and hide the effect from everything except the shadows. Hold Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, click and drag and split it in half. And now that particular effect is only affecting the shadows. And of course you can start introducing, you know, color in there and all kinds of cool things to, you know, adjust the image and start creating some really cool effects. So it's just a matter of, of, of thinking of an effect that you want to apply 
to an image and how you can target that spe uh, specific thing. Another thing may be, for example, this is probably the worst example, but let's just assume that you were, you know, fixing the person's skin tones, right? You know, and you're painting with color here, and then you probably would change the blending mode to color or something like that. I know that in this case, uh, I, this actually might not be that bad of an example. So you can see here that when I painted over the, the shadows, it kind of darkened that area. You may not want your painting effect to, to darken everything or to be applied to everything. So then you can just double click to the side of the layer and then hide that paint from these darker areas. Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to split them in half and just create a smooth transition there. So it affects the, the image, but not necessarily destroy your shadows. See that? So that's one way, another way in which you can use Blend If on a portrait. Cool. Eight oh five at Nora said made all all the sense there is to it. Finally, I get the shallow deep explain from Sweden. Awesome, cool. What is the difference between fill and opacity? Actually, I have. Did I publish it already? I I don't know if I published that tutorial already. Um, no, I haven't. So the next tutorial that I publish will answer that question. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you um, what it is. So the difference between uh, fill op and opacity in the context of a layer. Um, so there's there's two really, I mean, there's more, but two main things you, you, you always got to keep in mind. Number one is when you create, um, let me just do a text layer because I think the text layer will just help me explain this. So fill, right? That's fill. So when I reduce the opacity, it reduces the opacity. If I reduce the fill, it reduces the opacity. So what's the difference? Well, when you have a layer style, um, let me just reset this list. Reset to default list, and I'll do um, I'll do. Let me think of what would be the best to show you. I'll do a stroke, a stroke, right? Increase my stroke, and I'll do that inside, like so, and I'll make it black, like so. So when I, I have um, a layer style, when I reduce the opacity, it reduces both the opacity of the original pixels and the pixels generated by the layer style. When I reduce fill, it reduces the opacity of the original pixels, but not the pixels generated by the layer style. So that allows you to create really cool effects because now I can come in here and I can start adding something like, I don't know, we'll see like a drop shadow. Let's see, yeah, a drop shadow. And I can click and drag this out like so. And maybe you know, make that white or something. I don't know what would be the best. Um, maybe change that to this. I don't know, you know, I, I think you get the idea. You can create some, some cool, cool effects just by using that technique because the original pixels will, are no longer there and you're just using basically them almost like a stencil not necessarily a stencil but like because you know it doesn't have to be a stencil effect basically you can just hide the pixels that were originally there and only keep the ones created by the layer style i mean for example in this case we can just go in here and hide the stroke and just make this into um a regular shadow let me increase that Blur it like so. See that effect there? Crease it. See that? That's another effect that you can create. We hid the original pixels, only kept the layer styles by using the fill slider. Another thing that you can do with uh, opacity and fill is by uh, um, with blending modes. For example, one of there's eight blending modes, and I'll show you what they are in a moment. Um, you can paint with white like so. And if you go into color dodge, when you reduce opacity and fill, they look different. You get different results. And also, if you uncheck transparency shape layers, the blend looks a little different and you can almost use this as a specular highlight. So you can imagine like a really bright light hitting this guy. 
see that? We got a really bright light hitting his head there. And I can use the fill to control the intensity. And that only works with um, eight blending modes. So uh, there's 27 blending modes. They, except for eight, fill and opacity gives you the exact result. For eight of them, they give you different results and you can uncheck the transparency shapes layers checkbox to get a different blend. So let me, let me pull up this page on my website. Give me one second. Um, here we go. There is this page on my website here called Blending Modes Explained, a complete guide to Photoshop blend modes. And you can just type in blend modes on Google and I'm sure you'll find it or, you know, Photoshop training channel blend modes. And we have a section here. If I scroll down, can I get to it? Oh, wait, did I already pass it? Yeah, I did pass it. Here we go. Um, these, these are the eight blending modes. Uh, color burn, linear burn, color dodge, linear dodge add, vivid light, linear light, hard mix, and difference. So these are the eight blending modes that give you different results when you adjust opacity compared to fill. And you can also uncheck that transparency checkbox, the transparency shapes layers checkbox that you see here, that one there. When you uncheck that, you also get a different blend. So that's the biggest differences between fill and opacity when talking about the layers panel. I hope that answered your question. <clears throat> Let me see if there's any other questions. Yes, you can click and drag uh, drop shadows. That's right. When you apply a drop shadow on the layer style, you can click and drag drop shadows. So let me just add a drop shadow here. You can see it. Drop shadow, there it is, you can click and drag it. See that? And if you have the use global lights, the light in the scene will adjust accordingly. So let me increase that so you can see the highlights. And when I go into drop shadow, notice how the highlights also change accordingly so that it matches the shadow by, because I'm using use global light. That's checked here and that's also checked right here. Okay, so the question is um, several layers. With, okay, so yeah, so the thing is, if you have several layers, okay, so the question is, um, I'll, I'll read it. Uh, when I have several layers in a group with several blend modes, sometimes I need to collapse that group and not lose the effect. Is there a way to maintain everything like inside of the group? So the short answer is maybe <laughs> depending on on the order of the layers, what the effect is doing. Um, so I'll answer that question this way. It depends. Short answer is this. Let me think of the best way to, to show this. Um, if you, maybe we can do it with this image. Um, let me see if you have a group and you know, we'll just make this like overlay or something or actually, you know what? I think that this layer is not the best for what I'm trying to explain and, and answer that question. So we'll just use red. I'll paint with red and we'll change it to like overlay or something, right? And then you have another layer and it's like, I don't know, blue or something. And in this case, we have like, I don't know, we'll make it something very different. Um, we'll do exclusion or something and you want to collapse these, th there's really no way that you're gonna be able to keep that effect. If you press Control E on Windows, Command Option E on the Mac to, to merge the group, you're gonna lose the blend mode because there are two different blending modes. So there's no, no real way of keeping that. And if you change the blending mode to something like normal, you'll lose that effect as well. By the way, the default blending mode is um, pass through. When you change the blending mode to normal, you what you're really doing is essentially merging the group without merging it. So that's what how what Photoshop does does behind the scenes. It essentially makes it all into one layer, so to speak, or at least the the outcome is the same. But you still keep get to keep the layers. Um, so to answer your question, there's no real way of of doing that if 
your scenario is something like this where all the blending modes are different but if say the blending modes in there are both you know like we'll say overlay or something actually i want something that actually shows through oh did i not change the blending mode to yeah pass through so if the blending modes in there are both say overlay well then yeah you can merge the layers and then you know make it into overlay and you get the same result or just change the group blending mode to overlay and you get the same result but i know that's probably not the, the your case because then you probably would have not asked the question so if there are different blending modes inside of that group you can't merge them and then keep the effect or somehow collapse them all into one and keep the effect i don't know if that made any sense um let me know if that answered your question so thank you so much for joining me i look forward to seeing you again very soon and have a wonderful weekend thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys soon thanks so much